G'day there guys, it's Connie here again and we are back with some more stories from Reddit. As always, if you enjoyed these videos, be sure to hit like and subscribe, and also the notification bell so you never miss an episode. Alrighty, let's get right into it. Alrighty folks, we're on True Off My Chest. This one was written by user Aggressive Male, and it's titled, There is something wrong with my wife. I'm posting here because my wife does not use or even really know what Reddit is, and I can't speak to anybody else but my therapist about it. I've tried asking friends and family, but none of them understand the gravity of what I'm saying, honestly. I'm a 37-year-old man, and my lovely wife, 36, and I have little to no problems with each other. However, upon noticing little things that are mounting up to a rather terrifying level, I'm not sure I can ignore this anymore. She's a great person. She's done so much for me, this whole marriage, and respects that I do not want to have sex after a rather traumatizing experience that I don't need to get into. She does little things that shows she listens and cares about me, and I do the same for her. I want to stay with her because we've been married for 10 years now, and she's all I know. But lately, I just don't know what's going on and why she's acting the way that she is. The first notable time was when we found an egg on the curb. We assumed it was from our neighbour, given that they have chickens and maybe an egg rolled out or something. Without a second thought, my wife stomped on the egg. Now, I would have been fine had it been an infertile egg or a cooking egg without anything, but the entire fetus was seen, and I threw up. She laughed, saying that it was funny, and at least the neighbours don't have to worry about another chicken. I told myself that it was just an egg, and she had no idea that there would be a fetus in it, but her reaction afterwards rattled me. I brushed it off because, like I said, I love her. Maybe that's stupid, but I do. I really love her. But the things continued, and my love for her is wavering. Some notable things I remember are stated below. We have a dog. We'll call him Butter. Butter is the most calm dog in the world, and housebroken and well-trained. However, one time he was very sick and irritated, and he went number two on the carpet. My wife screamed at Butter. Screamed. I told her to stop because the damage was done already, and Butter is a dog who is sick. I cleaned the carpet, and she never blew up at Butter again, but it rubbed me the wrong way how mean she was to him. I understand that she was frustrated, but Butter started crying and trying to give her paw, and she kept screaming at him. My mum passed in 2020, natural causes, but I was very close with her, and it took many years to accept it. I keep her favourite bracelet on the table with family photos of her and me. One day, it was missing and I had a panic attack. The bracelet was made by my mum's grandfather, and she wore it every day. It was a part of her. But when I told my wife, she told me that she sold it. I sobbed. I wasn't mad at her, just devastated. But soon after, the bracelet was back on the table, and I asked her about that. She started laughing and said that, You should have seen your face. When we were gardening, I noticed I dropped my keys, she was grouchy since it was hot, and she was planting flowers since the morning. When she found them, she threw them at my face and it cut my nose. She felt horrible, but that reaction threw me off. One time after work on Halloween, I was feeling particularly depressed for no reason. I don't blame her for this, but she played a prank on me and jump-scared me, something we do every Halloween. I started crying and having a breakdown because it was kind of the last straw for me after my shift. She laughed and kept laughing, and then went back to the living room and watched TV. One time, on Facebook, we found out that a classmate had been in a car accident. I told her, and she shrugged, saying that she didn't really know her, so it doesn't matter. It's okay for her to not care about the victim, but the poor girl was heavily injured, and my memories of her from school were pleasant, and she genuinely didn't deserve what happened. My wife and I love horror. We are horror fans, but I cannot stand violence against animals. It disturbs me. So, when we put on When Evil Lurks, as you can imagine, I threw up. The kicker is that she has seen it, but wanted to watch it with me since she loves it so much. I'm happy she loves it, but I would have appreciated a warning, which I vocalized. She shrugged it off, and that was that. That's a few, but the worst of it happened just yesterday. I tried my hardest to not say anything, but it might be my last straw. I was cleaning up our room, and my wife was at work, and I found a journal buried underneath the mattress as I was swapping sheets. For some reason, I opened it, and realized quickly that it was my wife's diary. I would have put it back if I didn't see the words on the page. I was horrified. 
she wrote that when she was driving, there was a line of geese crossing the street. Annoying, yes, but the thing you're supposed to do is wait. My wife wrote that geese are a useless species, so it shouldn't matter if a few get run over. Yes, she just ran over two geese on the road. Again, I was horrified. I know what people will say, so I'm going to answer a few questions. I love her. I recognise that sometimes her behaviour is unacceptable and concerning. I recognise the concern, which is why I'm here in the first place. But you all have to realise that for the past 16 years now, she's been my world. We dated for 6 years before getting married, and it's been 10 years since our wedding. In those 16 years, I've witnessed her go through horrific things, and she's witnessed the same. It's hard to sum up those 16 years, but it's difficult, and I'm already saying too much. I noticed the change over the past three years or so. Even then, in the moment, I didn't see it as an issue until reading that little journal entry. I can't just leave her, but I can't act the same around her after finding that out. I realise that I need to confront her about what I saw, but truthfully, I am afraid. I never knew it was something she was capable of until I read it and started putting the pieces together. Whatever is going on, I don't know what to do with it. She has a therapist and so do I. She seems genuine, but I don't know what to do, knowing that she willingly killed an animal without any remorse. Honestly, I just don't want to leave her. I met her young and all I know is her. She's seen me through the most vulnerable parts of my life and vice versa. Her family and my family are basically intertwined. We all love each other. She's basically been there longer than when she hasn't. If I had to leave her, I think that will be it for me. That'll be all I have. I'm 37, which isn't old, but also not desirable either. I don't even know why she had a crush on me because I personally don't think I'm desirable. I don't even know if this post will make sense. I don't know if anyone will take the time out of their day to read my struggles. My therapist is on vacation, so I can't tell her yet. I need somebody to talk to, because everybody that I'm telling brushes it off, since she's a very sweet person to them. I just want to fix this. Edit, answering some questions, I said, quote, She's witnessed terrific things. I mean that a family member of hers has passed, and one of her mutual friends passed as well. But this didn't happen until months later. We have no kids. I had a rough experience I won't delve into that made me realise I'm asexual, and I'll ask her soon. Oh jeez, yeah, there's definitely cause for concern here. Sounds like for whatever reason she just completely lacks empathy. Let's go to some comments. I'll be super honest with you. I was married for nine long years to someone just like your wife. The last straw? One of my cats being beaten to the point of her face being so swollen that one eye was shut for a week and she didn't get out of her hiding spot for three days. Urine and feces in the corner of a closet. I guess she couldn't bring herself to make a run for the litter box in case she would encounter him. I was out the door in a week. He took everything from me, but I knew this would escalate. Don't wait too long, OP. This sounds like psychopath and covert narcissism. Be safe, take care, and please confide in family members or friends you trust. Let people know what's going on. You have a low self-esteem. That much is obvious from the way you write and describe yourself. That is why you want to stay with a woman who has no empathy, takes pleasure in animals being harmed, even killed. And while this would normally be unnerving and freak someone out, you seem keen to turn a blind eye. People who harm animals and take pleasure out of it start with animals, but it graduates to human beings. I'm so glad you don't have any kids with her. You have said you don't want to leave her, and strangely you seem to believe that at the age of 37 you're on the shelf. You talk about families being intertwined, and that you've known her for years and years. So what? People get divorced after years of having enmeshed lives, mutual friends, shared assets, children, pets, etc. So what if you share these things or have been together for years? Is that reason enough to ignore and turn a blind eye to what sounds like psychopathic behaviour? Quote, she seems genuine and she has a therapist. Well, she's very aware of how she comes across and she wants you to remain in the marriage so she can continue to manipulate you, so of course she can do all the right things and come across as cooperative and reflective. She's not silly at all, and she knows exactly what she's doing. She hasn't become this way. Her mask slips every now and then, but she puts the mask back on to keep you where you are, exactly where she needs you to be. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm telling you, you don't know your wife like you think you do. 
Opie replies, I just don't know what changed. I don't. That's what disturbs me. She wasn't always like this. Well, let's find out. On to an update. Answering some concerns. Thank you for your comments and your time. I've had a long month, and there's a lot to say, but I honestly cannot stress enough how much your support and words, harsh or not, mean to me. I'll say what has been on my mind lately, but if anybody just came for this, here it is. I'm leaving my ex-wife, Anna, but we're still living together as I pack my things. I'm not really scared of her anymore, so that's her name. I sat down and had a conversation with her. Everything I wrote down and posted here was copy and pasted from Google Docs. I left some details out since they were identifiable for both Anna and I. I showed it to her and she blew up at me. I understand why she was angry. I did share information about our marriage and life on the internet. Her emotions were reasonable, but I started to get very irritable. She listened to the word vomit that just spewed out. She didn't interrupt me or yell at me because I think she realized in that moment how badly it was all affecting me. I begged her to just hear me out, and surprisingly, she did. She admitted to me that she also recognized that she was changing and told her therapist about it. Do I believe her? Not really. She said that she's been scaring herself and that she's been having anger issues flaring up that she's noticed, and as some of you predicted, she didn't want to give sex up, so she cheated on me with some guy she met at her job. Honestly, by the time she explained herself, I didn't care. Because I don't. With everything that has happened, this was the least shocking. I asked Anna, genuinely, if she loved the man she met, and she said yes, which hurt but also didn't seem like a surprise to me. I told Anna that if she didn't love me, I can divorce her and we can figure out the separation and home situation. She agreed far too quickly, but I was so emotionally exhausted and dumb with her crap that it didn't register how little she valued the marriage to just toss it out like it was nothing. I just told her that for the next guy, she needs to get help. She agreed that she would check herself into the hospital. Some of you suggested a tumour, but that wasn't the case. Her explanation was that the other man got her into drugs. That's all I will say on that matter, because it's all she told me. At this point, I don't even care what the reason was, because the impact was the same. Honestly, I'll forever kick myself down for not recognising any warning signs sooner. It should have never gotten to the point that it did, and while it may not be my fault... I'm haunted every day by the thought that I could have been smarter and stopped her from doing everything that she did. When I say that she wasn't always like this, I mean it. She didn't give a specific date from when her affair started, so I can't pinpoint it to an exact event that happened. I miss the woman she used to be, the lovely girl I've known for almost two decades. I know this was something that had to be done, but no matter how many times I tell myself that, it doesn't make me feel any better. For those wanting to know, Butter is safe. He's a good boy and he's staying with my sister while I pack up to leave. My wife never physically hurt him but she has yelled at him a few times. It hurts not having him here all the time since my sister's house is 30 minutes away but he's safe and I actually see him tonight. I also informed my family about this situation. I didn't want to but I knew it was necessary. They understand and apologised for their brushing off of this situation but to be fair, I downplayed it, so that could also be why they didn't see it as an issue. Her family knows we are splitting as well. As for me, I don't really have friends that are available that often, so I've spent most of my time alone in the house and thinking to myself, it was our house at one point. I remember when we first bought it and how excited she was. My best friend and I are going to eat out together, so that's something to look forward to. And she still admitted... I don't hear from her because they take your phone away at the hospital. I hope she can recover, but after everything that my therapist, family, best friend and you guys have said, I can't bring myself to stay with her. Breaking it off felt like ripping my own arm off. I was devastated and still am. She seemed distraught as well, but I don't know what to believe anymore. I don't think she doesn't care about me. I think there's a part of her that still cares, but maybe I'm wishfully thinking. Even through everything, I can't be mad at her. But I know loving her isn't good for me. Is it wrong to forgive her? To see everything from her side? It hurts. It really does. I don't know anything but her. It feels like my life is over, even though it isn't. I don't want to date again, but I just want to connect with other people. It didn't click how isolated I was until I left, and I realize now that she is at fault for my lack of communication with anybody. 
If I had to conclude this jumbled mess of an update, it'd be this. I'm going to be fine. It's only been like two weeks, but it's been the longest two weeks of my life. I realised that there are more people around that support and care about me. It honestly was really hard to accept that Anna was a disturbed individual who didn't love me. Sometimes, I still convince myself that she does, but everybody around me states that she doesn't, and I'm coming to terms with this. It's progress. I've spent more than 16 years with this woman tormenting me, and I have a warped perception of reality. It truly is not easy to experience any of this, and honestly sometimes I want to come back to her, but I know that maybe I can find the woman, or man for me, that will love me the way I need to. I'm working it out in therapy, and honestly I'm still frightened of Anna, but I'm thankful that she was the catalyst to a new chapter of my life. I learned a lot from this, mostly what love is and isn't. Thanks, you guys have a good perspective on things. I can't say that Reddit is what fixed my problems, but I can say that leaving was a result of the extra push you guys provided. I wish Anna the best, wherever the future takes her. While I'm sad that the future will not have me in it, I think this was the best for both of us, since she didn't seem to love me, and I now fear her. This should be the end of my updates. I don't really see this updating further unless something happens with her. I want to be done with this, and I want to move on. Yeah, obviously it's going to be really hard. I mean, 16 years is a long time, but Opie's doing the right thing in turning his back on this, that's for sure. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, she gets diagnosed with some form of psychosis or something like this. Like, the fact that Opie seemed really adamant that she was never like this is kind of fishy. Or maybe she was just really good at hiding it. Let's read some final comments. This is a lot to unpack for OP, but this is the best for all. Wife has shown signs that she is genuinely unwell of a person, and Opie should care if she tries to crawl back to get him. I wonder if these are really new behaviours, as the wife seems to be claiming, or if she just hid them better and Opie didn't notice. I'm sure Anna is going to make the news someday. Not sure what drugs turn you into a hateful, animal-killing abuser. Yeah, me neither. Alright folks, we're going to leave that one there. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. What do you think happened to the wife here? Anyway, let's move on to another story. Okay, we're over on relationship advice. This one was written by a throwaway account, and it's titled... Fiancé keeps pressuring me to perform party tricks with friends. He also wants me to perform at our wedding. I lurked long enough to know that one of the main questions is how long we've been together. I met him in college and we started dating after graduation. I was also recently promoted to a position with different hours that allowed me to pursue a hobby I did through high school. I practice aerial silks and my new position allows me to clock out before the studio closes. I kept up some conditioning that I used to do in the gym, so it helped me somewhat stay in shape over the years. However, I've noticed a change in my fiancé, James, since inviting him to a practice. We were invited to a graduation party over the summer, and one of the games they played involved a volunteer party trick for a prize. James raised his hand on my behalf, without warning, and asked me to do a split, and everyone was looking at me. Before I continue, my studio had a recital that I didn't feel ready to perform in. I was just getting back after years off, and I vented to him about how I was shy for other reasons. The first was that I was really rusty, and the second was because of some weight I was trying to lose. Those were my reasons for skipping the recital that he knew weeks before the graduation party, so when he asked me to do a split and handstand on the spot, I was really anxious and whispered I didn't want to, but he tried to get others to cheer me on to do it, and that's when I started to cry. I got up to go to the bathroom after they moved on to someone else, and he followed me and apologised too. For context, he wasn't like this until he came to my practice, and he did something else a few weeks before the graduation party too. He began asking me to do flexible positions in bed, and I didn't mind the first time he asked, but he's wanted to have more sex since my practice, and he'd asked me about different poses each time. I don't mind sometimes, but he's been unusually pushy since the practice, even when I said I didn't want to sometimes. I told him I was fine with it sometimes, but he keeps bringing me new poses he looked up that turn him on, but aren't ideal for me, and I felt like an object with his splits request to the graduation. I accepted his graduation apology when we talked at home, 
and I told him I didn't mind trying poses from time to time, but I also told him that sometimes didn't mean every time, and I also told him how the graduation hurt my feelings. He since apologised and stopped requesting poses for a few weeks, but something else he said made me wonder if he got it at all. He said he wanted to respect my request, but he also asked if I could perform silks at our wedding after looking up some YouTube weddings that featured them. I told him I didn't want to, and that it didn't seem like the time or place, not to mention becoming sweaty and having to change clothes. I also pointed out how those videos featured contracted performers, and not the bride performing. I haven't told family or friends that I got back into silks because I want to refine my skills and confidence a bit, but he's been pushing me because it'd help me overcome my fears. But when I told him no, he told me to think about it and that he'd check back with me occasionally, and that really bothered me. I'm not ready, but he doesn't understand that. He's also not the one performing, but he's been really pushy since attending my practice, and it's honestly turning me off a lot. I just wanted to ask how to go forward from here after he said he laid off the bed request to give me space, but that, quote, sometimes we need to be pushed to overcome our fears. He is not backed off of me performing, and I'm honestly thinking about calling things off with how pushy he's become. Edit, I'm at the point of trying to find the words to call things off. The first talk we had was when I vented about why I didn't feel comfortable performing at the studio recital. The second was after he blindsided me at the graduation and apologised after, and that was when we talked about his bed requests and he promised to stop requesting poses too, and he did. But then he began using the wedding performance as something he wanted to push me into, to overcome fears, and wouldn't take no for an answer, and that's why I'm at my wit's end. He's even been looking into renting a silks rig for the wedding after I said no, and that was my last straw. I gotta be honest, at first I didn't understand the ridiculousness of this request. I thought it was someone else's wedding that he was asking her to perform at, not her own wedding. There is no way in hell anyone would want to do that for their own wedding. This guy's delusional. Let's go to some comments. Honestly, I do think it would be healthiest if he called things off. And you may get comments encouraging you to, quote, give him an ultimatum or sit down and have a serious talk with him. But the reality is that you've had repeated conversations with him and he refuses to stop. This is not a communication issue. It's a sexual and emotional coercion issue. You may also receive comments claiming that you're overreacting or he just wants to show you off. He doesn't. He repeatedly pushes your boundaries, and this kind of behaviour usually escalates over time. I bring up these potential comments because I've seen them time and time again on women's posts about abusive behaviour, and I don't want you to blame yourself. This is not okay. A marriage should be a partnership. It doesn't sound like this one will be. You don't deserve to be treated like this, nor pressured like an object. Your fiancé's request is gross. It sounds like it's a sexual thing for him. I think he just wants all the men there to ogle you and envy him. Keep repeating no is no until he gets it. He will. I'm a fire dancer and do acrobatics, but I wouldn't even think of doing it on my wedding day. His request is selfish. Now for an update. I talked to him shortly after my post and had a few notes from what I mentioned above. I told him about how he changed since my practice and that I felt like an object since too. From ignoring numerous no's after giving him too many chances, I told him I was done with the relationship because it had been going on for months, but he said I was being unreasonable and that he gave me the space that I asked for. When I told him that I never asked for space, he asked what would happen if our kids never learned to step out of their comfort zone, but I told him that that was unrelated. The bottom line was that he ignored me numerous times over the past few months, but he said I wasn't being fair. He also said that he downloaded some photos from the old Circus Facebook account, a separate one I used to have for silks only, and posted them for encouragement, and I had no clue until he told me. He said he wanted to show me for encouragement because I was better than I thought, and he took me to an Instagram I didn't know he had. It wasn't his main, and the account was mostly for memes. It also had a different name that wasn't related to anything personal, but he said some of his friends followed it. He showed me some posts that came from downloaded images of my high school and college performances, and he never asked for my consent. He even wrote that I was lacking in confidence, and he showed me some comments that said positive things, but there were also one or two that were somewhat lewd from people I didn't know, and the bottom line was that he never asked for consent. He also scrolled away from the lewd ones quickly too. 
I planned to post my Silks comeback on Facebook or Instagram after my first recital, but it hadn't happened yet. He told people that I came back on his account, and he said he planned to show me the account and encouragement closer to the wedding. He also said I was being unfair, because it was a part of me that he found attractive, so I should be willing to do more in bed. He wasn't like this before I got back into Silks after years off and coming to my practice, and he's been a different person since. He even admitted to getting off to some of the photos, but that he'd rather do it with me. That really bothered me because some of the ones he posted were of me in high school, on top of everything else. I'm currently working on moving in with a girlfriend temporarily, and she's going to help me move. My now ex-fiancé also made a post about how I was being unreasonable and getting upset at him for supporting me on silks. He also said I was projecting my insecurities onto him for trying to be supportive, but he didn't include the sex pressure or wedding performance he was pushing for. I also asked him to take the photos down, but he said he wouldn't. It really feels like an invasion of privacy. I also talked to my parents, as some suggested, and they were happy to learn I got back into silks, albeit sad at the same time. My dad is really upset at him, and said he's trying to look into the photos being removed, but I'm not sure if much can be done. Mum said that me getting back into silks likely triggered something that was always inside him, since he knew I did silks in the past, and he became excited when I got back into it. It's just been really stressful, and I'm taking a break from silks for now. I'll try to go back someday, but I'm just really stressed, and will probably take some time off from work too. A few aerialists and circus artists also gave advice on my first post, which surprised me, and some said it unfortunately wasn't uncommon to find people like my ex-fiancé who sexualize everything and can't appreciate the art and the skills. Wow, the more I read about this guy, the more red flags just pop up from everywhere. Okay, Obi makes a final update. Hey guys, I just wanted to come back to this community, especially because it was really helpful, and a few people from here reached out too. I wanted to get back into silks for the new year, and I'm hoping to soon. I wanted to start in January, but some stuff happened that's been stressful during and after the breakup. He's been really spiteful since we broke up, and he refused to take the photos down. I tried reporting the photos he stole from my circus Instagram like some suggested, and some of them were able to come down after my parents reported it too. But he then began posting my photos to one of his meme Twitter accounts since our breakup, and he's posted some that I didn't know I had. I've since made my circus Instagram private for the time being, but I don't want it to be private because it's specifically for Ariel and sometimes helpful as a resume for landing gigs by word of mouth. Not that I was back to being in shape for performing, but it shows my progress over the years. I'm guessing he downloaded other photos in the past, and my friend thinks he used some kind of downloader to download them from Instagram. She also said he could have screenshotted it, and the whole thing's been annoying. I've been trying to move forward with my life, but Dad has been suggesting legal action for two reasons. One is that he posted new photos of me, including some from high school practicing and performing, and the second is because he admitted to getting off to my photos after we broke up and right before I moved out. That really messed with me, and I don't know how long he's done that for. He didn't specify what age I was in the photos he did that on, but Dad is encouraging me to bring it up to authorities because he thinks there might be something more there and he's uploaded a steady diet of new photos since the breakup, despite my page being temporarily private. The only reason I didn't do it immediately was because he suggested getting a lawyer first, because he's been vindictive, along with a therapist that I now have, and he wanted me to talk to my therapist about it too. I've hit a delay in going back to my Silk studio, not just because of what he said about my photos, and posting new ones I never thought he had, but mostly because of the possibility of something much more sinister going on. In some of my younger photos back in high school, there were other kids in them too, and I'm considering reporting it, not just for that reason, but also because I feel I won't have peace until I do. Dad has since consulted with a lawyer about the photos of me as a minor and other kids and him stealing my photos, and I'm likely considering it. I just hate people like him who sexualize everything, and probably never appreciated the skills and hard work, he made another comment before I moved out, and he said, The only reason people cheer when girls do splits and no other moves is because they're opening their legs. He began insulting me before I moved out, and it's made me so angry just to remember them. I'm trying to forget and work with my therapist, 
but I'm hoping to return to Silks at some point this year after sorting through what I mentioned. I especially appreciate the support from this community and the person who suggested asking fellow aerialists here. Yeah, regardless of whether or not this guy's a creep or not, which he undoubtedly is, you shouldn't be fetishizing some people's professions and things like this without their consent. Or just don't do it in general. Grow up. Let's go to some final comments. She's not a child, but he feels like he has some kind of parental authority over her. This creep discovered a fetish he didn't know he had and decided that took precedence over his partner, his relationship, and his entire life. Also, these performances aren't sexual, unless you consider the performer's body exclusively as a sexual object. The fact that he's halfway to impersonating her is even stranger. Glad there is a lawyer involved. I hope they destroy him. Yeah, I seconded that notion. What are your thoughts about this one? Let me know down below. Anyway, that's it from that one, and we'll move on to another story. Okay, jumping over to Am I the A-Hole, this one was written by user Forever Curious, and it's titled Am I the A-Hole for Refusing to Fully Support My Wife Financially? I, 50 male, and my wife, 43, have been together for 7 years, married for 18 months, no kids on either side. Our relationship has generally gone well, we're physically compatible and enjoy each other's company. Honestly, the conversation is not super deep. We mostly have generally positive but surface level interactions. From the start of our relationship, I've paid for most of our joint expenses, dinners, vacations, and we both moved into a house I owned four years ago. That wasn't a big problem for me, I own well, and she was also making just over six figures and was able to buy herself what she wanted. She has a bit of a clothes habit, but it doesn't really bother me. Over the last year, a few things changed in our relationship. Firstly, my wife left her job. She went out on leave but didn't return. Then we went on vacation. And while on vacation, I had a serious medical issue which meant we had to cut the vacation short. I spent six weeks in and out of hospital. My wife was supportive. Example, driving me to and from appointments. But didn't really engage with what I was going through. A few months after that, I'd pretty much recovered. At that point, my mother passed away. I grew up outside the US, so I went back to my family for the funeral. While I was with my family, my wife asked me if I'd consider an open relationship. To be honest, the medical issues had negatively impacted our sex life. I felt the timing was inappropriate, and my wife apologised. I came back from the funeral a couple of weeks later, and went back to work, but things felt tense. Last week, my wife told me she was running out of money. This was the first time she'd mentioned any money issues. We'd never had a joint bank account, but she's insisting that we open one, and I put my salary into it. We've never discussed that before, either. I told her that I didn't feel very emotionally supported in the relationship, and I feel blindsided by what I saw as an ultimatum. She responded that maybe we should separate if I'm not going to step up and fully support her. Am I the a-hole for refusing? Update, thanks to everyone who commented. It's honestly pretty sobering and has forced me to confront some things about my marriage, but also about myself that aren't particularly pretty. We're sleeping apart tonight, and I'm going to bed. Honestly, I think the fact that Opie is hesitant to do this is because of the fact that this doesn't really sound like a marriage. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I feel like if you're with someone for seven years and you can't have anything more than a surface-level conversation, you're doing something wrong. Let's go to some comments. Not the a-hole. As an adult in an adult relationship, it's pretty crazy to expect someone you met at age 36 to support you without some kind of trade-off. No kids, I assume, so what's she doing all day? She sounds like she's pretty clearly said, I want to sleep with other people, and if you won't support me financially, we might as well separate. Opie replies, She is an aspiring actor. She's been in a few shows, but they pay little to nothing and take up lots of time. Yeah, that's how it comes across to me as well. Opie comments on what his wife's medical leave was all about. She took a medical leave for burnout. We did discuss her going on leave, but not that she wouldn't get another job when it ended. Then I got sick, and it feels like a downward spiral since. Another comment says, Not the a-hole, but your relationship sounds less about love and more about convenience. Are you together just so you're not alone? The marriage is young and may not be hard to get out of, but I wouldn't stay in such a relationship of what sounds like one of those if we haven't found love by X age, let's just get married kind of situations. 
If she's ready to separate, then maybe it is time to dip out. Opie replies, This hurt to hear, probably because it's more true than I'd like it to be. I don't like being alone. At some point, I looked at all the people I dated and went, You know, this is pretty good, all things considered. But pretty good, not great or love of my life. So, you are right, of course. But sometimes when I hear statements like this, it's like reading about people with terrible bosses who stick out their awful jobs because they don't have any financial cushion. Two weeks without a paycheck, and they're halfway to homeless. This is terrifying for them, and so they stick in a suboptimal situation, even though, in theory at least, there are many better jobs. I was adopted at birth. My adoptive mother, who recently died, was a narcissist who used me. I was smart, and she showed me off to her friends, which I hated. I had no friends of my own. Generally, my childhood sucked. I've made a much better run of my adulthood. Good jobs, my own friends, etc., but my relationship cushion is still thin despite 20 years of therapy. It doesn't take much for me to think, maybe nobody actually loves me. I'm not looking for pity, but be aware that just because something seems like an obvious thing to do, doesn't always make it easy. And Opie responds to multiple comments on if his wife wanted an open relationship. Hmm, replying to a bunch of comments here. I genuinely don't know if she's sleeping with someone else. She denied it when we talked about the open relationship, but I understand why people are suspicious. I will push harder on that, but can I get a truly honest answer? Now for an update. Well, it's been quite a whirlwind of a week. After we had the initial discussion, we didn't talk for almost a day. Then we came back with a mutual expression of what the F just happened on our faces and stared blankly at each other. I suggested that we take the time out to write down what was on our minds. Then we could have each other read it and that would be the basis for a more in-depth conversation, so we spent a day doing that. Boy, it did not go well. I wrote about how I perceived she was emotionally absent while I was sick. She really didn't understand what I meant, and I tried to explain, you know, sometimes I just need someone to talk to. Her response was basically, all you want to do is talk, and I felt that was really cold. What she wrote was basically a diatribe, well that's how it felt to me about my legal obligation to support her. At one point, she said our quote-unquote marriage, quotes were hers, and I felt particularly hurt by that description. It was clear that we weren't on the same page, or even the same book, about what the problems were. My wife then suggested cancelling, and I agreed. Her therapist knows a marriage counsellor. He sent us some intake forms, which asked us to rate our satisfaction with the marriage, and the accessibility, responsiveness, and engagement of our partner. It was a miserable exercise filling out the form and realising just how low my ratings were. So that evening, I sat my wife down and said, I scored us really low. She asked, should we bother talking more? I said, no, I don't think this is going to work. She agreed pretty quickly and we cancelled our appointment with the marriage counsellor. We have an appointment with a divorce lawyer later this week. I'm probably going to owe spousal support. I'm not thrilled with that, but it's only money and I'll get over it. My wife understands she'll need to move out and has started packing. How do I feel about this? Well, obviously, it's a big shock. At the same time, thanks everyone for the comment on the previous post, it's clearly the right thing to do. There was nothing here worth saving. Now for some final comments. Someone says, for the spousal support, maybe the fact that she decided to quit her job could have an impact on the amount of support you owe. Opie says, From what I understand, spousal support is based on the past year of marriage, when she wasn't working, yay. It is half of the length of the marriage. So it's not forever, but it doesn't matter why she quit her job. It's strict community property where I live. Opie comments on getting therapy in order to deal with his issues and understanding what the best decisions would be to work on himself. Thanks, and I wish I felt that way. That's not to say divorce isn't the right decision, it is. But my past experiences with being single all involved me falling into deep depression a few months later. Not I'm unhappy being single style, but I can't get out of bed and multiple antidepressants are all ineffective style. So what I feel right now is a tightness in my gut that is a bit like impending doom. I really wish it were that simple. I've been to therapy for 20 years. I have several hobbies, hiking, board games, trivia, live theatre. I go to church for social connection and I have good friends. I used to have low self-worth. 
I worked on that for a long time, and I think of myself as being worthwhile. I like who I have become. What I have never been able to change, though, is what happens to me physiologically when I'm alone. I basically shut down. The best explanation I got from a therapist is that this comes from my early childhood. I was adopted at birth and didn't bond as a baby, so something there seems to just be missing. I would love to solve this problem, but neither therapy, hobbies, friends, nor the psychiatric medications I've tried have really helped. I'm very much open to suggestions here, but they need to be a lot more specific than work on yourself. Yeah, I mean, it goes without saying it's going to be a hard road out, but I think Opie's made the right decision here. I mean, they both did in the end. It's weirdly funny how they did the marriage quiz, realised how low they scored, and were like, yep, let's get divorced. At least there's self-awareness going on. Anyway, what are your thoughts about that one? Let me know down in the comments. Anyway, that's it from me today. I hope you guys enjoyed those stories. Thanks for making it to the end, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a good day. Cheers.